Welcome to the first ever official Zen Habitat's reptile room tour. Casey here. I am a certified vet tech and animal care manager here at Zen Habitats and today I want to share something super special with you guys. It is the first official Zen Habitats reptile room tour of 2021. We have over 20 animals to show you today and I can't wait to hear what you think about them. Before we head inside, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. animal that I want to introduce to you all is Chi. He is a five-year-old male bearded dragon and he is the reason that Zen Habitat started. So his owners, uh, which are the owners of Zen Habitats, uh, couldn't find very good um, solutions for um, reptile habitats, so they designed their own and here we are. If you're interested in the story of how Zen Habitat started, check this link out right up here. Um, we made a video of the origins of Zen Habitats. Since we're talking about reptile enclosures, Chi is housed in a PVC four foot by two foot by four foot enclosure. So most people don't think of beard dragons needing this much space, but in the wild, it is observed that male bearded dragons will sit on top of things like fence posts to watch their territory and to watch over their females. So that's pretty much what we've recreated in his enclosure. I'm gonna put Chi back and we can continue on with this tour. Uh, the next critter that I wanna introduce you to is Eddie the leopard gecko. So it's during the day right now, so he's a bit sleepy. Um, leopard geckos are nocturnal, but let me see if I can pull him out just for you guys to get a little view of him. Oh, hello, sir. Come on up. So this is Eddie. We're just gonna keep him out for a second because obviously he doesn't wanna be out right now. But like I said, Eddie is um, almost two. Leopard geckos are super cool. They have the ability when threatened to drop their tails and they're able to regrow that tail, which I think is so cool. Eddie is housed in a Zen habitat as well, which most of our animals that we're gonna show you are. Um, so this one is four feet long by two feet deep and only 16 inches high. So it's really good for these small terrestrial geckos. And then in between Chi and Eddie's enclosure, we have a deluxe stacking spacer. And this pretty much is for storage and it holds some of our lighting. Um, and I have one on the bottom too, because it just kind of completes it and makes it look nice. <laughs> this next set of enclosures I consider to be more of my desert type animals. So the first bearded dragon I have over here is a three-year-old female. Her name is Ty. She is just absolutely Gorgeous. I just love her to pieces. And then right below her is Miss Zoe, who is another bearded dragon. She's about four years old. Again, they're in Zen habitats. They each are in a four by two by two foot wood enclosure with a deluxe stacking spacer to hide my lighting, as well as a cabinet stand for storage. Bearded dragons are from inland Australia and they're typically in a arid type environment like deserts, things like that. Bearded dragons get their name from this extension of skin that they have on their throats that kind of resembles a beard. And when they are excited, whether that's a negative excitement like stress or a positive excitement like I'm gonna get fed, they will turn black. <laughs> so when we come over to this next stack of enclosures, it's pretty much identical to this first one with two four by two by two wood enclosures, a deluxe stacking spacer again, and a cabinet stand for storage. Up here, we have a five-year-old bearded dragon. Her name is Reiki. She's currently hiding in her cave right now, so I'm not gonna bug her, but she was obtained around the same time that Chi was, and she was actually bred with him and had produced two successful broods of over 40 eggs each. 
My next friend is Cleo. Oh, it's a big yawn. Good girl. Uh, she is a northern blue tongue skink. And as you could see from that massive yawn, she's got a giant blue tongue, which is, I think is just so cool. It's like she ate like a blue popsicle. Um, she is such a sweet girl. And can you guess her favorite snack? It's actually blueberries. <laughs> Within Cleo's enclosure, we did a thick layer of cypress mulch for her to burrow in. She's got a zen corner cave, some live plants for enrichment, and this cork round that she's just absolutely obsessed with. <laughs> she loves to hide in there. So next, since we went over our more desert type animals, um, we're gonna move over to our more tropical species. Before we move on, we're super curious to know what kind of reptiles you guys keep at home. So drop a comment below and share with us who you have living with you. The next two animals that I want to introduce you to are called Bert and Ernie. They are both crested geckos. Um, they are so stinking cute. Crested geckos are native to New Caledonia and are just like seriously the cutest things ever. I'm gonna pull out Bert so you can get a closer look at him. Here is Bert. He is super duper cute. Oh boy. These guys are incredibly fast jumpers, so I just, I'm gonna only hold him out just for a few minutes. Um, crested geckos are also called eyelash geckos by, as you can guess, that beautiful spikiness that they have above their eyes. Um, unlike leopard geckos, crested geckos can drop their tails when they feel threatened, but it does not grow back like the leopards. But there's Bert, isn't he so perfect? I just love him. All right, friend, let's go home. All right. And right above him, we have Ernie, who's up in this corner. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna pull him out so I don't have to wash my hands between the animals, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about it, their enclosures. So we have them in Zen habitats as well. They are two feet by two feet by two feet. And we stacked that on top of a cabinet stand and we kind of modified this little um, piece for our lighting and we just thought it looked really cool being nice and high. And we have lots of live plants in here. Uh, so he's got some pothos and a peace lily, some ferns. Ernie's got a fern and some Chinese evergreens and it just looks super super colorful and pretty. Both of these enclosures are also bioactive, which means that they have their own little ecosystem within them. So minimal cleaning needs to be done because there's a cleanup crew that lives within the enclosure, which is in the form of springtails, isopods, different little buggies that kind of eat all the waste and stuff. What Zen Habitats has are these really cool bio basins that get taped into the enclosure and it holds all that substrate in without it leaking out. The next animal I want to talk about is Ollie. He is our Chihuahua gecko. And before I met Ollie, I didn't know what a Chihuahua gecko was. They're also referred to as mossy prehensile tail geckos. Because I had never worked with them or even seen one, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with it. So I'm gonna pull him out. I washed my hands between the last animals because again, we don't want to cross contaminate something that Bert and Ernie might have onto Ollie. All right, this is Ollie, guys. Isn't he just the coolest? So he's about two years old. These guys, like like their name suggested, you know, the mossy uh, prehensile tailed gecko, um, they legit look like moss and lichen, and I just think they are just the coolest things ever. But there he is. Oh, there you go. All right, we'll go home. <laughs> Ollie's enclosure is also a two by two by two um, zen habitat. He's got some live plants, and I say that I love plants 
But for whatever reason, this fern in here is very sad. So if any of you have any fern tips, please let me know. <laughs> so the next three animals I want to show you um, are red-eyed tree frogs. So currently they are not in a zen habitat, but they will be. So keep an eye out for that video. I'm gonna do a really cool enclosure build and we might even have you guys choose the names of these guys. Because the frogs, have semi-permeable skin, it's important that we wear gloves um, when we're handling them so that we are not uh, contaminating them with things that are on our hands like lotions, soaps, oils, things like that. Don't touch me, I'm sterile! Also going to wet the glove just so that their skin um, doesn't get stuck to the, the nitrile. Like I said, there's three of them in here. I can see all three of them are sleeping right now. They're gonna be so angry with me. Hi, friend. Here we go, little friend. This is one of our red-eye tree frogs right here. Oh, isn't he just the cutest ever? Um, I don't know if they're males or females currently. Um, they're still fairly young, but they're just the coolest things, right? So I'm gonna put him back because I know I can tell he wants to jump right now and I don't want him to hurt himself or, um, you know, get stuck on the floor and get dirty, things like that. So, <laughs> red-eyed tree frogs are super cool. They get their name obviously from their bright red eyes. The thing that I think is really cool about these particular tree frogs is you know, they have these blue stripes here, they have orangey hands and feet, and when they go to sleep during the day, they close those eyes, they tuck in all their colorful parts, and they just kind of look like a green blob on the leaves. So that makes it hard for aerial predators to spot them, and so it's like really great, smart ways to evade predators. All right. My next friend is Phoenix. She is a corn snake. We adopted her from someone else, so I'm not exactly sure of her age, but she is full size. She is just like one of my favorites. I love corn snakes. I don't think they get enough hype. Um, they're so much fun. They're really cool, docile snakes, but have more energy than say like a ball python. So corn snakes are native to the United States. Um, Southeast United States, basically from New Jersey south to Florida and about to like Louisiana. She loves this cork ground right here. Um, this is her favorite place to hang out. So I'm gonna see if I can get her to come on out. Oh, as you can see, she loves this cork ground because she just like sticks herself in all the different holes. And oh, there she goes. <laughs> She's going back in. Um, but I don't know if you can appreciate how adorable her little face is. Oh, never mind. She's on this side now. <laughs> but I just think she's the cutest thing ever. She's so curious. She's always out. Like she is always watching what I'm doing. Like very, very inquisitive snake. Um, so yeah, there she is. I guess I couldn't get her out for you to see fully. We're still trying. Oh, oh. Here we go. Well, so she is really holding on with that tail right now. But if you can see that adorable little snoot, look at that cute little face. I just love her so much. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> so in Phoenix's enclosure, we have um, a mixture of coconut core and a lot of sphagnum moss to keep that humidity up. She's got some live plants, a snake plant. So my next friend, which if you've seen our recent videos, you might have already met Miss Rosie. She is just about a year old. She is an Argentine red tegu. Um, so like I said, she's still a juvenile, but we've been working really closely with her to get her socialized and habituated to being handled. So tegus are super duper cool. They can, like, they're just like the smartest ever. I mean, I know there's some very smart lizards, but <laughs> like, I just love how well you can train them. It does take a ton of patience to get them to that point, but they make great companions. So I'm gonna feed her some snackies. But Miss Rosie is 
housed in two four by two by two enclosures with our corner extension kit. And so that gives her 10 feet in length of floor space. She will need a bigger enclosure as she gets bigger herself. Um, we expect her to be about three feet when she's full grown. Male tegus can grow up to four and a half feet long. Good girl, she's so gentle. I just love her so much. <laughs> and she loves her blueberries just like Cleo. <laughs> I'm also gonna give her some buggies. These ones I drop because she gets very excited about them and I don't want her to knit my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit like that. <laughs> so it might look a little weird, but she's got two different hides in her enclosure. One is our regular Zen cave and the other one is our Zen corner cave. So she has had the corner cave for the entire time we've had her, but she's totally outgrown it. So I have upgraded her to the regular Zen cave, but I didn't know if she was gonna be uncomfortable not knowing where her little cave was, so I wanted to give her both, just in case she didn't like the big cave. Rosie, as well as the next three animals I'm going to show you, I would consider to be advanced pets and should be kept by experienced reptile keepers. So the next four animals I think are super fun and unique and I can't wait to show them to you. The next friend that I want to introduce you to is Kenny. He is an amelobe panther chameleon and he is seriously just like the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. Um, he is in a 4x2x2 four by two by two enclosure as well with... <laughs> so unlike what we were taught in cartoons. Chameleons don't really blend in, they can't blend into just like a background, like he's not gonna look like wood or something like that. So they're able to change colors in as little as one minute, um, and that's more of a temperature or heat or excitement change, but for him, like he'll go from this really cool orange to almost a lime green when he's excited. Our next animal is super good at camouflage. I'm actually having a hard time finding him right now, but it is a baby Chinese water dragon. He, his name is Ming. He is about a year old. Since I can't find Ming right now, I'll make sure to add some photos of him to this video. Chinese water dragons are amazing. So they get to be about three feet long, including their tail. And we currently have him housed in a four by two by four enclosure with all these great live plants for him to hide in. The other thing we have added to his enclosure is this fish tank. And inside there we have guppies and a lot of live plants. So in the wild, Chinese water dragons will live along riverbanks and along swamps with branches coming over the water. And when they feel threatened, they will drop right into the water. And they can stay under and hold their breath for up to 25 minutes. So the next critter that I would like to introduce you to is Minnie. She's only about three months old and she is a Brazilian rainbow boa. So she, I'm absolutely obsessed with her. She once she's full grown, is going to be about six to seven feet long. So that's why she's in this eight foot enclosure and only about 20 inches long right now. She seems to be doing very well in her large enclosure. She's got plenty of places to hide. She can find her food fine. So these guys are from <laughs> the cloud forests in Brazil um, and areas like that. They get their name from the iridescent sheen that their scales have that refract the lighting. So it kind of like tricks your eye into seeing this cool rainbowy sort of look to them. So we have her in their two um, PVC four by two by two Zen habitat enclosures with our length extension kit. I also have a bio basin in here. She doesn't have a Zen cave yet. I just gave her a small one, but she will get upgraded to a Zen cave when she's a little bit bigger. These guys don't really bask, 
Um, they are more of a terrestrial snake, so they're not like up in the trees, they're more in the low coverage of the forest. So besides the reptiles that we keep in this room, I also keep what I feed the reptiles. So we have breeding of superworms, mealworms, and dubia roaches within these bins. All of these feeder insects are bred specifically for our animals. We don't sell them, um, but we put a lot of care and effort into our bug breeding to make sure that our reptiles are nice and happy and healthy. I've gone over all the animals that are physically in this room. We have one more Zen pet to look at, plus three bonus animals that live here at the office that I want to show you guys. The last Zen animal we have is Chip. He is a two and a half year old ball python. He is just like a really good natured snake. Ball pythons are really cool snakes because they don't get very long. So Chip here is only about three feet long. That's as big as he's gonna get. And we have him housed in a four by two by two wood enclosure. Again, he's got nice deep substrate to hold up some of that humidity. He's got some branches to climb on, a zen corner cave, and one live plant because he's a little bit of a bulldozer and will destroy all of the plants that I give him. <laughs> so next, I'm super excited because I want to share with you our non-zen pets, or we're gonna call them bonus pets. So the only reason why I'm calling them non-zen pets is because they're not in a zen habitat, nor would they really be able to. But our first one is this beautiful 16-year-old female painted turtle named Charlie. We may have a surprise. Um, this is not going to be Charlie's permanent enclosure, um, so keep an eye out. We may or may not be figuring out a way that she can be housed kind of in a zen habitat. <laughs> So our next office pet is a pretty common fish, um, but you may have been introduced to Bob from our Instagram stories. Bob is the sweet potato that we asked you guys to name. He's getting massive. Bob is in our next pet's tank to help filter out some of the bad stuff that the fish excrete. The pet that I'm referring to is Pat. He is a two-year-old betta fish. Again, very common fish species. A lot of people keep them, but I just kind of want to go over the importance of appropriate enclosures for these guys. So like we had talked about with Chi, the reason why Zen Habitat started was because there was no good options for reptile enclosures at the big box stores. And that's kind of the same case with these pet betta fish. People will put them in just like goldfish bowls or vases. Those are not appropriate enclosures for these guys. So we currently have Pat in a 16 gallon aquarium. He's got some live plants. I think Pat is living his best life in here. And I think even though he's just a fish, he deserves as much care as the rest of our office pets. Our last office pet that I want to introduce you to is one that's pretty near and dear to my heart. This is my boss's, but I also have three of these guys at home. They are called axolotls. So they're essentially the larval stage of the salamander, but they stay in this stage for their entire life. So they stay aquatic. They have these really cool fluffy gills and this dorsal fin. Like, they're just amazing little critters. These guys are only found in one place on the entire planet, and that is in Lake Xochimilco, outside of Mexico City. These guys are critically endangered in the wild, but have plentiful populations um, in the pet trade. And this is because they were um, used in research, so a lot of them got bred and then introduced into the pet trade. These guys are used in scientific research because of their amazing regenerative abilities. These guys can lose a limb, they can lose parts of the tail, gills, even bits of their brain and spine and are able to grow it back. 
This concludes our 2021 reptile room tour. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'd love to hear what animals you guys keep at home or even animals that you have in your office. Please let me know by commenting below. We post tons about our animals on our other social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Thanks for watching. Thank you.